and um, another one um, here what we have is a URL redirection um, that is very uh, technical I can say that it is nothing but uh, uh, phishing so this is another way to uh, lure the food critic or the food reviewer into a different uh, business uh, we uh, yeah this is what we have uh, for uh, targeted market any questions how can filtering help uh, in terms uh, so, of so that uh, to, to make sure that that particular hotel is always on top list you, know, like you want to be uh, the first five or the first ten you want to be on the top uh, by um, you know, making modifications to the database to the bank okay thank you next group Default. He pays a default and I give wrong rate or <coughs> so he's purposefully doing it, intentionally doing it. Or uh, he could have uh, social media well, get uh, other cre user credentials like while food critic credentials and then uh, go through that person's uh, credentials and change the reviews for some of the for the ratings and things like that. And then uh, this URL was uh, uh, what is for yeah, you can be an unauthorized user, say from the front end itself, you could uh, get the access uh, somehow by intersection, maybe there's a bug in login or somewhere, so you uh, log in and then you change the reviews for some users, or so some users or something, or uh, scooping, you try to be uh, some other uh, critic, you try to be a good critic and change the reviews of the and then directly from database, someone could uh, go directly change the reviews for some hotels or ratings of some hotels, or some hotel competitors or uh, the feedback uh, apps competitors could directly uh, go change the reviews. That would be given to and Can you explain the law thing again? Uh, how is that directly on the existing user? So we can get uh, we can get access by sniffing the URL by using some. Going into technical things by going into some like tools like some bug tools and all by missing that particular website URL, so we'll be able to catch that uh, user's login credentials. So you're saying that uh, um, oh, so you're you are somehow uh, sniffing the actual like a key keyboard yes. stroke or yeah. something like that of the different users. Okay, that uh, should be separate. If he's a valid user logged into the website, we can use some plugins like Firebug. We can go to the JS console. Yeah. We can see some data which is there in the URL. Yeah. So the data also. We so you think that the use existing users' credentials you'll try to get? That is yeah. what you're doing exactly. there. But as an for the credentials, you're trying to see where the credential would lie, and you're guessing it will be the URL. Yeah. <coughs> or else we can like. Uh, Coming into like we can inject something like SQL injection and then use some different parts. Don't think of techniques. Yeah. Okay. Don't think of techniques because the techniques actually start limiting you to only write that's why you've written logs. You're trying to you're trying to think of the different techniques. There are different ways, like even when we spoke, right? There's three things that we spoke about. It would have been three different branches for you. So that's the thing. You have to think from a little higher level. Oh, any other questions? Thank you. Next one. This is the last group, right? Who is who is presenting? Who is presenting? Topic was competitor release attack attractive features before us. Uh, there are two ways like they can actually release features before us or postpone or stop our release. Uh, release feature before us, they have to get access to our code. There are two ways like uh, uh, talking to employees or hacking our 
remote GitHub repository and all. And uh, to access, uh, to get access to project management tools, like to see our future uh, release plans and all, they can hack uh, through employees and all. Get access to staging environment, like uh, unreleased codes, they can get. So when you say employees, do you mean uh, login as employees and get that? Or like social engineering so make it employees? employees? It could also be login as other employees who have and access to it. Yeah. And uh, to postpone our release, uh, introducing vulnerabilities in our code and, uh, and uh, hacking our network to get the servers down and up. Uh, and uh, bringing down the other apps, uh, they're running apps, uh -huh. live apps. So they were busy with that. Yeah. <coughs> Get us busy doing other works. And yeah. Any questions? I like the fact that you mentioned postponing the, the release also as an option. Interesting. Any other questions? <laughs> 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 okay, thank you. Uh, we can return to our seats. Was it an interesting exercise to do? Thinking like an attacker? Yeah? So, um, <coughs> what we have done is we have put in um, like trees again for your reference. In the slides, when you get the slides later, we email them to uh, uh, to you the links. Uh, but for all those six, you'll find trees in there that uh, you can look at. Okay. So essentially, what we have done is we've identified the different threads. So every so every block, every end leaf that you have got, right? These are all threads, right? So getting access to the DB server, for example, accessing DB through the application, sending too many asynchronous calls, creating load on database, those kind of things, right? These are different threads that can exist, which can become a vulnerability if you don't fix them, right? Okay. So uh, what did we do till now? We have identified we identified the security objectives and understood what the application was. We decompose the application to actually list out. Uh, actors, assets, attackers. We identified the threats which are there by, you know, drawing the, uh, then prioritizing them, creating a magic quadrant of sorts, saying, okay, we pick up only the high priority ones. Now, if we were to break it down a little bit further to understand what are the real threats which are there in a little detailed manner, we created the attack trees for that, and we have come to that level. All good so far? All on the same page? Now what we'll do is we'll identify vulnerabilities, things that we're probably leaving out of the system, right? So that is when we start talking about dev. So now we are in development or testing. So when you design thinking or tech analysis and stuff, if you know that these kind of risks, right, these kind of things can happen with you, right? You would already start putting in your thought process, your architecture, everything in a per in a manner that you keep these things in mind while you're designing stuff. Right? So that can help you in the design thinking. Now let's say you went ahead to development and testing phase and you realize that uh, you might have left out vulnerabilities in there or when you're actually developing the code, you think of these <coughs> things that you created in the attack trees and you think of those uh, values when you're creating the, you're developing the code, you're making sure you're not putting in vulnerabilities. How do you make sure of that? So here, so vulnerability identification is basically trying to find, understand what is it that you've not mitigated or insufficiently less mitigated out. So at the start, you can start with OWASP top 10 as we were discussing earlier. Uh, it is just a start again. It is not everything. You have to understand, um, understand what your business is like. Now this is where, I mean to understand vulnerabilities, sorry before I hand it off to you, um, to understand the vulnerabilities, this is where your theoretical knowledge comes into play. As much knowledge as you have of the different ways of attacking <coughs> these leaf nodes that we talked about in the attack tree, as much knowledge as you have of the techniques, 
as much as you would know of ways of doing those or achieving them. So this is where the actual reading up of stuff and you know learning up of things come in. But now at least you know what you're trying to focus on, right? You could say send too many asynchronous calls on Google and it'll tell you ten different techniques that you can go ahead and read about. But it you've narrowed it down to some extent. So for for you know starting off, you can look at the top ten vulnerabilities. It is not exhaustive. Uh, it is not enough. Most of the times for your businesses, uh, you'll have to know beyond this also. But it's a start. Thank you.